I think I want you an apology first because some 12 years ago, I believe, when you started the business and the showroom, I laughed about it <laughs> and I thought, who on earth is going to walk down Park Lane, look at the private jet showroom and say, I'm going to go in and buy an aeroplane today. But I was wrong, wasn't I? So I'm here at the heart of London's Mayfair, at the only city centre private jet showroom in the world. And I'm here with the man himself, the founder and CEO of the jet business, Steve Asano. You were wrong, like a lot of people. I mean, I was told by probably eight people who were friends or professionals, when I told them about the idea, they said, you should go check yourself into a psychiatric hospital. They said exactly the same thing, so don't feel bad. Yeah. Well, so are you telling me that you, you do get people walking up and walking in and say, I want to buy a private jet today? You would be shocked the kind of people who walk in the door. I'm not saying they walk in the door and write a check and say, I'm buying an airplane. But once they come in, then they, we do a presentation on our video wall and show them all what's available and how you go through the process of buying an airplane. Just basically getting them comfortable with what we do and what's going on in the industry. And eventually, we find out from them that they're looking to buy or sell their airplane. And uh, by the time we can get through that whole presentation, we have a pretty good idea if they're going to be able to work with us to represent them to either buy or sell a plane. Fantastic. Uh, what an amazing place you have. You saw me around earlier and I'm very, very impressed. Where do you really get your clients from? Where do you meet your clients? I mean, well now, uh, you know, a, a good percentage is repeat business, recurrent business or referral business. Um, it's amazing how some of our really good clients over the years will we'll send customers to us, their friends. And uh, that's become a, a really good, steady flow. You know, we're not doing hundreds of deals. You know, we're, we're, we're a much more smaller boutique kind of company. Um, but we get a lot of stuff from, uh, from uh, our, our existing client base. But we get people who, like I said, just walk, you know, who stay in the area, drive by. They're curious of seeing an airplane in the window. And when they come in, they see what we do. And it's a way really to meet people that you would never, ever get in front of. That, that's the key in our business. You know, you never get to meet the, the real principals, the decision makers. And that, that um, the concept we have here is really broken through that big, strong glass wall. Fantastic. Steve, when I want to buy a car, before I walk into a showroom, I have a good idea of what I want to buy. If I want to buy a Mini, I go into a Mini showroom. So the chances are I'm going to buy a Mini A, B or C. When we're talking aircraft, how do you get to people to focus on what they really need or what they can yeah. afford? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, and we're sort of, when we have, take them through our presentation live on our app, we really tell people you've got to pretend that I'm your doctor, okay? Uh, you know, when you're sitting at home and you're talking to your spouse and, or your friends and you have an ache or pain, they say, what's the matter with you? I don't know, I have this pain here when I move, but it, it, it'll be okay. But when you go to the doctor, say, listen, you have to tell me exactly your problem. If you don't tell me exactly your problem and be truthful, I can't help you. Sure. And the same thing here. So when they see, when you have to input certain data into our app, uh, but like especially what's your maximum budget, People always like to say, I don't have a budget. Well, that's garbage. You know everybody has a budget and everybody has something in their mind. They, they always want to say something bigger than the real number. We see it all the time. We get pilots coming in here and say, yeah, my boss is looking to spend $25 million. We want to carry 10 people. We need to go 5,000 miles. But if he comes in with the, with the principal, and we've had it happen before, he says, you know, really on my max budget, I'd like to stay around $15 million. I need to carry eight people. You know, I go, you know, this many, you know, 5,000 miles, maybe once every six months. I really need something to go 3,000 miles. It, it's amazing how when people see that they're inputting the data and it really is going to be very bespoke, very custom for them, they really get serious about what information they give us so we can spit out the, the answers that really are exactly pertaining to them. Okay. There's a lot of brokers in this industry. Why are you different? Are they good, bad? and ugly people out there? <laughs> well, there's a few bad ones, there's a few ugly ones, but there's a lot of good ones. 
And, um, but our unique selling proposition, our USP, you know, is to really be different. And, and the way we can be different is by really educating the client. And that's what we try to do more than anybody else. And we, we only like to work on an exclusive mandate representing the buyer or seller. Once we do that and we know we're contracted with them, everything we do can be transparent. And that's the problem in our industry. Nobody wants to be transparent. Nobody w wants to tell them who owns the airplane, where it's based, who's maintaining it, because they're afraid that the client will try to go around them and do something without them. But when you're working on a mandate, you don't have to worry about that. And that's the way we really try to, to be. Our, our motto is basically an educated client is our best customer. So we really try to make sure he's so educated, they really know why they're making the decision they're making. And hopefully, they'll make that decision to have us represent them. One of the things I liked, or I heard you saying before, Steve, is that you take a very pessimistic approach on your projection to the client. So I remember you saying, you'd rather hate me today than six months' time. That's a really good saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, the fact of the matter is, is you know, when people try to say, you know, um, I want to spend X rather than a Y, everybody always wants to spend less than what they really want to, but they have a number in their head. And you could say three million, and you could have said three and a half million, and it wouldn't have made a difference. Because if you say three and a half, I'll say I'd rather have spent three. So people try to say, no, you can do this for two million, and really it's going to cost two and a half. It that doesn't make any sense to shortchange the person. So I'd rather That's sort true. of be, I wouldn't say pessimistic, I'd say more conservative in my numbers. And, and also I think that uh, I'd rather have them a pleasant surprise when they actually buy the airplane and operate the airplane and, and numbers are better than what we told them. Because then I don't want them calling me back later and say, well, you know, Steve told me it was going to be this and it's this. I, you know, I'd rather make the enemy the beginning and, and say, sorry, this is what it's going to cost. Right, if, sure. if this number is going to bother you, don't buy an airplane. And then it's going to be better. It, it's just a better follow through from there. Very true. Very true. Can you just take me briefly through the process of buying an aircraft? How far do you go? Obviously, when you buy an aircraft, there is lawyers will be involved setting up the SPV that owns the aircraft and so on and so on. How far you as a broker get involved? You know, we, we take them from the cradle to the grave. I mean, we really, we tell people, listen, we get paid to buy and sell or sell your airplane. Everything else we do for you is a free value added service. And we will do that for you for free as long as you own that airplane. So we might p charge a little bit more than a lot of other people, but we think our service and, and the deliverable we give is far superior than anybody else gives you. We start looking, first of all, to make sure you want to buy that model aircraft. You might say, I want to buy this model. But the fact is, is we still think you should look at what else is out there and how it competes with what you're thinking of to just double check, make sure because I don't want you to come back to me, oh, Steve, why don't you tell me I should look at this airplane? So once we actually go through an array of models and you say, no, I am con confirmed, I want to buy this model, then what we do is we'll go out and check the whole market and call the, all the owners of every single aircraft of that model to see if there's anything that's as off market or I'd sell it, but I don't want to advertise it, I don't want to put it on the market. And then we present that whole list to the client and we start filtering out the things that give us a little bit of heartburn, whether it's got damage history, it's too high time, the pedigree is not as good. We take them through that process. And then we minimize the, the choices and say, what would be your number one, two, or three choices of these airplanes? Forget about the price. Really, let's look at the airplane. And then let's decide, let's try to make an offer on this one, and this one, and this one. And then when we get back and we get counter offers from these people, we now say, okay, now this is where we sit, this is the best airplane, this is the best value, this is the cheapest airplane. So which one do you really want to go for? And then we go back and we start targeting that one airplane. And once we get that negotiated, we negotiate the purchase agreements, we follow through getting the right person to oversee a pre-purchase inspection, we help with negotiate the contracts with the lawyers, we help if it needs a deregistration, certificate of airworthiness, export certificate of airworthiness. We get involved with all of that stuff so that the principal doesn't have to worry about that. We're really his, if you want to call it, orchestra conductor, you know, handling all the players in the field 
to make sure that airplane is delivered, hand it off to the management company, which usually gets involved with us once we decide what airplane we're going to be buying. And, and from there, our job is 95% finished. The 5% will go for eternity that he owns the airplane. Yeah. I've been in the business for 28 years, and as I said earlier, I met a lot of brokers, the good, the bad, the ugly. One of the most annoying things, I think, is when a broker finds a client an aircraft and then walks away until it's time to get paid. <laughs> um, so I think listening to you, uh, having from A to Z, that continuous service, is fantastic and is really invaluable uh, to the client. And I guess that's why you get repeat business, people coming back. Yeah, you know, we, we deal a lot more with that entrepreneurial-led corporation. So not so much this big Fortune 1000 companies where they have the flight department and they have the board of directors. And the, usually we're dealing with the principal at, you know, to get him uh, nego to negotiate the transaction with him. Then it gets handed off to his lawyers and things like that. But we really find a, a deeper connection with the principals. And um, we feel responsible and more connected to them. It's not just a transaction. It's not just a fee. Matter of fact, I know this sounds ridiculous, but you know how much we're going to make on a deal is not our first or second priority. It, it really is. You know, what's the best deal for the person? You know, really is the right airplane. The great person. We can have a good relationship with this person. And then, okay, you know, how much we're going to make? It, it's it's in that whole calculation, but it's not the number one priority. And I, and we're fortunate enough because. You know, we've had enough business where we don't need to do a deal next week to pay, you know, the rent here. So we're a little bit more relaxed about, you know, how we do our, our negotiations. Good. Good to hear. Now, the clients you deal with, they're obviously high net worth individuals, people that they make money, and I guess they're pretty smart and pretty shrewd. The people walk in and always want a deal. When you find them a specific aircraft, how hard it is to negotiate between the buyer and the seller? Listen, I started 40 years ago. I have never, ever been told, when I told them what the price was of an airplane, never been told, that sounds cheap. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the the instant response, no matter what number you yeah. give, wow, that sounds expensive. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think they'll really take? That's yeah. usually the, the, we're so used to that. Um, but the markets are so efficient today. I mean, versus where they were 40 years ago, where before there was the internet and before all of these people were in the industry, you know, the, the market's pretty efficient. You, you know, I can talk to somebody on the telephone, you can give me answers to five questions about your airplane, and I can tell you within three or four percent what you're going to sell that plane for. It's, it's a pretty easy thing to do, and we're doing it every sure. single you know, yeah. day. Yeah. Um, but these clients are difficult. Uh, they negotiate for sport. And they like the little ping pong, you know, back and forth. It's love a deal, you know, don't they, they? they? And they all love a deal. They all love the deal. But, you know, once you actually cut the deal, when you actually, and, and sure, the lawyers get involved in this 500 touch points of a contract. The principal wants to know how much am I paying, you know? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Once you agree that number, okay, all the pressure, the atmosphere loosens up. Everything becomes a little bit easier. Um, and, and once they decide I'm going to buy the airplane and, and I'm going to pay this price, then all of a sudden, you know, maybe I should change this and I should buy this and I should buy this. And all of a sudden they're spending 200000 400000 800 <laughs> You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, they cut the deal. That was what they were happy about. Now let's figure out how to, to make it you know, more personalized. You mentioned the Internet. And how many times you got a buyer calling you, probably 11 p.m. or midnight, and say, I know you told me to buy a Gulfstream, but <laughs> I've been browsing the internet and I found this one here for 500 grand. What do you think? <laughs> My God, we get this a lot. And we get it from people we know very well and people are knowledgeable in the industry. It's amazing. I I'm shocked that some of these people do that. Now, the internet, there's nothing true out, out there. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, there are people putting leader ads, they're phantom airplanes. The airplanes were sold. All they're trying to do is trying to find a customer. So they're hoping that somebody like you 
you know, Mr. Jones calls this ad, and all of a sudden, ah, we got a guy. Now we know a person who's looking to buy an airplane. Now they start calling all these people. Hey, I have a client. I'm representing, yeah. and it goes like that. So it, it's pretty funny, though. I mean, people uh, always think that they found something amazing, and it just doesn't. And they work. don't need Steve. And they don't need Steve. <laughs> you know, I mean, you save a, a, a few dollars to pay a, a broker. Uh, you know, and the aggravation factor that you're going to get. And by the way, no matter what we charge, okay, we will absolutely save them much more I can in the process. Yeah. So, you know, I always tell customers, don't look in my pocket, look in your pocket. I'm adding value to here. Okay, and whatever I cost you is going to be free when you look at how much I'm going to save you on the transaction. I can imagine. So, Steve, finally, how, how do you work with operators? Obviously, y you sell people aircraft, but this aircraft has to be operated by someone. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, outside the U.S., where most airplanes are managed by management companies, yep. and in the U.S., obviously, it's a flip-flop. Less companies are managed by management companies. Um, but what we try to do is, you know, like a client that was just here this afternoon, you know, we tell them, once you decide, we know what kind of airplane you want to buy. Okay, when we start going through that process and we start negotiating that airplane, we try to now decide, okay, you're going to base the airplane in this place. It's, it's this model aircraft. Let's find you an operator or a management company that actually has at least one, preferably at least two of those model aircraft. And, and is based relatively close um, uh, logistically to where your home base is going to be. And, and the reason we try to do that is because, you know, they, they want to have a, a company managing it who's familiar with that model, who knows the maintenance on the airplane. If you have a problem with the, the pilot, you always can get source other pilots and flip-flop for parts, for pilots, for anything like that. And we know who the good operators are and who good, the good management companies are, and we introduce them to those people as a courtesy as part of our service and once they go and meet those management clients they have to make sure the chemistry works with them Absolutely. you know it's one of those yep. things again you know we can lead the horse to water but we can't make it drink so we can make the introductions and hopefully uh they click with the uh with the management company Steve, fantastic thank you very much that was very informative thank, thank you for you. your time i appreciate you coming thanks george